We greet you all our friends in your sure's mighty name. I want to this day above all days. I want to greet my precious young friend there in Cincinnati, Ohio, and Sophonia. May the great riches of Yah through his eternal power in your sure Hamashiach rest upon you, my friend. And from all of us here at Tashua, we said to you, Shabbat Shalom, my Aksaphonia. I'm not worrying about mom and daddy. I greet you, all right? How about that? It's an excellent thing to be loved. I love being loved. That's why I have a soft spot for my babies, all of them. Always wanted to be loved. Always. Always wanted to understand the dynamics of that kind gesture that Yah commands us. To love our, our achim. We don't know a damn thing about love. I'm going to say this and I'm going to teach. Your gives us a parameter. We are betrothed. We are engaged. We have been drawn unto him by the power of his Hamashiach. A living Torah. That saves us. And deliver us from the shackles of darkness. And so when one is betrothed like Yosef and Miriam. Even though that's. It was found to be that she was with child. So he privately wanted to put her away. He did not want to make an open spectacle of this Bethula, that's what she was. She was virgin in nature. She was virgin in Ruach. That there were things she did not know. That's what a pure mind is. That's what a virgin mind is. It hasn't been tainted. It hasn't been tainted by all kinds of concepts and dealings into things that are unclean. And so you are granted unto that man a wife. Just like he grants unto those that seek him. There is nothing more precious than a wife that loves a man she has learned. Not sex. That's what you all equate love with. Hollywood is full of that. It is hell's word. In order for her to do that, she must learn how to, first of all, to reverence, to honor. If she doesn't do that, she will never learn the beauty of love. Every damn woman thinks that she's wife material because she can strut her stuff Show off her ass, her titties, you look a mess. Cover your funky self. I don't give a damn if you don't love me. But a man finds an it show, he finds an excellent thing. And then he has favor of Yah. So first of all, we must learn how to honor Yah, to reverence Him. And then we can be taught by the messengers uh, what love is. That's why when a daughter to Zion learn how to honor, to regard a man, then she can be taught by the mothers what love is. She doesn't know a damn thing about love. She doesn't know a damn thing. She doesn't know what love is. I ask you a question. 
children say they love their mothers, don't they? And the daughters will unleash such a vile tirade against their mother. Talk to me, hypocrites. Talk from your home. Send me an email and say, preach your own preaching man. I shall. And some of the most hideous tirades they bring against them. I watch my natural mother and her only daughter. The convulsion of their comparativeness with each other. And of course, any time I was in the midst, I could shut them both down. Shut him up. Oh, woman, you didn't teach her a damn thing about womanhood. And you rail against her. She reflects what you are. Of course, she will get quiet. You all offer quiet, too. And because my natural sister did not honor, honor thy avat and thine iman. Why? Because your command. That your days should be long upon the land of promise that you grants unto us. You understand? We have life of endurance. And power to endure the very rigor of circumstances. Don't tell me about your situation you don't know. Don't tell me about and don't cry about your circumstances. When I see the daughters of Tizion and men that are in some of the most adverse conditions. And they love you Damn your circumstance. You don't know what I went through. So what? That doesn't give you privy to insight. Or some kind of special attention. Hell, you learn how to honor your ach, your achots. You will learn how in that process, honor a man or honor a husband man. You can honor that, you will never honor a man. That's why we have difficulties. I don't know why I'm going this way, but is that so right? I was thinking this morning, it's so wonderful to be loved. It's a blessed thing to be loved. I love being loved. I love the friendship of love. We equate love with some kind of sensual activity to satisfy just one component of the senses. This man, that beautiful little lad, he has that little bane, as our Zakin Yaramiya would say. He holds him with, with this velvet-like hand, although he will correct him. And so his love for that is the birth of that power to progenerate and the life that Yah put in him. And so he will handle him like a vessel of precious gold. It is precious. Has no sensual interaction as he with his Isha. But the love is the same. I don't give a damn what you say. You can't love her. You can't love him. No way in hell, woman, you're going to love me. You understand? How about that? You all don't like me. I had someone to write me my Zachin the yesterday and said, Preacher man, I'm at the crisis of life. You're the only man I trust to tell me what Yah says. Of course, I will deal with his sins first. You wicked lad. You corrupt, my friend. It was a husband and wife wrote to us last night from Texas. We have one of the most finest individuals in the state of Texas that has been a tremendous supporter of this labor. He has not allowed anything to interfere with that job, that family. You understand. And so this husband and wife writes and say, we're so glad. 
that Yah directed us to this site to hear. You don't venture upon this. So when you come to this site, you know that Yah is going to correct you. Don't come here and try to correct me. Don't do it. I don't give a damn who you are. I don't care about your scholarship, your wisdom. You come here and be quiet. You will find out what little you have. I recall, I'm going to teach, give me a moment. There was one that came all the way from Colorado. He said, I came with one intent to set you straight. You did? He said, I come here to find that I'm lacking so much. You have begun to set things in order in my life because I told him, shut your mouth. You come here with nothing, my friend. I didn't find you. Y'all allowed you to find this. So shut your mouth. I will not allow anyone to come and disrupt the order of our shaha. That means it, the pure accolades and accolades unto you of what we call, quote, worship, unquote. So I will not allow anything to do that, Yisraya. And that's a fact. No doubt about it. It's so wonderful. It's so tough to be loved. I want to be loved. I want the beauty of the daughters of Tizayon. It's not how you show your ass off or your fine shape. There is something of an essential of quality that is greater than you shaking your ass. Are you exposing yourself? Or you want men to look at you? Pure daughter to Zion. She is known by the ability of her beauty of her hands. And when a man sits in the plaza with the Achim and the Zachim, they say, what a gem you have. Not what a whore you got. Not one with big titties. I'm not going to stop talking like that. I don't give a damn how you think. She got some fine legs. It's wrong. Yeah. The daughters of Tizayon don't say to him, look at your man. Look at them big calves he got. Naked. Before the daughters. Ah. I said to my Isha the other day, I said, when you look at me, it's not that you look at my big gut and all of that. You just say, that's a fine thing. Well, no, no. I said, no, 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 no. <clears throat> you look at me and say, that's a fine man. I'm not trying to be fine for anyone else. You understand? That's what I want her to say. I'm not worried about anyone else say that. I don't give a damn. So it's so wonderful to be loved. And the way that we are loved by him is that first of all we must reverence him or yira with a great fear. You don't reverence your man. You're not worth a damn vat of spiro. Bah! You're not worth that. You see your daughters of Tizayon teach them to be chaste, beautiful, quiet. Shut your damn mouth. It's amazing that we will try to critique others and we're in worse shape than them. It's amazing. Let the works I do speak for me. Now, it's our example that we present, our beauty. When her daughter walks into the marketplace, the eyes of the men turn, not because of some sensual connotation, but for the value of her and say how beautiful. And I hate a mincing Jezebel. I hate a woman that tries to integrate herself in the midst of the company of men. I don't like that. 
She wants to be known by men. She wants men because she has low self-esteem. Same thing with a man. You look a mess, man. Your gut look like a hog's gut. You might as well say, oh, man, I, I, it makes me no different. You look a damn mess and you think that some young tender thing is looking at you just silly. I want a young daughter to see me and say, what? Can I tell you the story again? You know, there's one thing that Evander Hartsfield, he would always rebuke me. He would say, you silly little boy. And then he would do it in my house with my issue. He said, you're a little boy. I never fought him. I listened. And I would cry because I would say, I don't want to be a little boy. He would call me that. He had traveled the country. He said, my friend, I've traveled. I was a 25-year-old lad. He said, I haven't found men twice your age, at your age, that have such knowledge and understanding and wisdom of Torah. And you have a great love. My love doesn't mean a damn thing. It is the power of his testimony. And through all of that crud and my ignorance were hidden the gems of Yah, the revelation of his truth. I didn't see it. But it took that for me to get in a line with Torah. And he would say, look at that little old boy with this moody attitude. Because my Isha would not say anything. Look at him. Stop acting like a boy. <laughs> <laughs> I would take it to heart what he said. And I would find my Zakim. I would find me a place to cry. I would find my Zakim, Jimmy, the hidden places where she didn't see me. But Yah did. And I would weep my Ohot Abigail. I would cry. And I would weep. And this would be my constant cry to Yah. Yah. I don't want to be like that. Because he was telling me the truth. He was not lying to me. And he would often visit this. He was living in Chicago. So he would often visit and then I would assist him in revivals and teachings. And one day he says to my Isha, he says, Oh, look at, look at your husband, man. He doesn't act that way anymore. And I didn't even know it. It just. <laughs> so I found my little place and I cried and I wept. There's something twisted here. Because what we considered here, the heart. This is the heart, the Liban. Here. Something is wrong there. And don't tell me your circumstance has created that. I'm birthed from a mother, six children by six different men. Never seen my natural father until I was 53. Now you think that situation is horrible? Now those have never seen their natural father. My youngest brother has never seen his natural father, never met the man. But that doesn't make me twisted and dysfunctional. My mother called me every kind of name, you son of a, you bastard. But I'm not dysfunctional. I would not intrigue my wife that way or the babies like that way. You're sick in your damn mind because you don't want to deal with you. Not my brother nor my sister, but it's me or yeah. Not standing in the need of prayer. Standing in the need to be delivered from all of my wicked and deplorable ways. I'm so full of sin, not their pride, but my pride that's destroying me, not being honest with me. I'm honest with me. I'll talk to me like I'm a damn dog all the time because that's what I am. I desire the crumbs of my master's table. I desire the crumbs of his table. I desire the crumbs of the table of Yah. For the riches of his crumbs are greater than anything that the world will offer. That's why we need strong men. We need ish. We need the bath of Tizion. That their strength is multiplied. They're not afraid of the silly generation. I am not afraid of it. 
I had a man call me this morning. I want to know how you do. I said, you don't ask me a damn thing. You don't go to the doctor and ask him if he knows what he's doing. You don't go to your job and talk to the CEO and ask him if he knows what he's doing. You don't go to the store manager and ask him, are these things the right fruit? You will not do me like that. I will not allow you to do it. I've been preaching this more years than you are all. 31 years old. Get out of my face, young man. You could sense in his voice the great beauty of his sorrowfulness. He said, I, I apologize. I said, you think that Yah would lead you? Here you were in prison. He found one of our tracks there in the prison house, federal prison. And then he began to inquire, and someone sends him into the prison house, another track with this logo on it. And you think that you're going to question me? Nah. Y'all leading you to a man that would set your house in order. Yeah. And tell you to be quiet, young man. Shut your wicked mouth. Yeah. We'll tell you, daughter, to shut your mouth. You're not even ready for a man or husband or nothing. You haven't even matured here. Yeah. Shut your damn mouth. Yeah. Everybody's looking at me. Nobody's looking at you. They're looking at you because of... Stop it. I see why people don't like you, man. That's all right. Did they love your sure? The last fool that was here said, you all had 135 people. Something gets wrong. I said, this is a silly boy. He's a silly boy. There were 5,000 following your sure. I've never had 5,000 in any assembly, in any gathering. And what he said to them, he announced to denounce them. You follow me? You got to eat this living Torah. You got to drink the Zabak, the offering that is required. And they said, hell, that's a hard thing. And they all turned. And they walked no more with him. He turned to the twelve and said, will you all leave me also? They said, no, son. Before the cock crowed, one had denied him. The one that kissed him on his jaw, hell, he sold him out. For 30 pieces of silver. And these dogs telling you to buy silver? They're dogs. And gold? They're dogs. They're dogs. Give a damn who it is. They're dogs. And when the 12 saw, when the others, 11 saw him on the stake, they look and say, uh, even as Yehuda said, you be the Messiah, then deliver yourself that you may deliver us. He said, it is the power of this witness that will deliver you. It is the living word, not some damn freak Jesus. It's a damn lie. Damn Jesus. I would say it the other way, but my little babies, their little ears, they don't understand. Wait till they go to sleep. Damn that dog. He's a damn dog. And they said, well, we're going to creep on out of here. And get back to business. And that's what we have done. We don't want to examine ourselves with truth. We examine ourselves with a condoluted con mind, don't we? But we examine our ark differently. We examine our heart differently. Can I say this and I'm going to preach? I said to my Isha the other day, and these men, the few, have been faithful. Some have dishonored me. These men have honored me overall. Because I've honored them. You understand. And I said to my Isha, we were talking, I said, you know, Raphael. I said, there is one man that he is probably one of the most gentlest. That doesn't mean he's weak. Men I've met. Used to play basketball when Zakim Ben Amin was in his heyday. He was dirty and tenacious, but I liked his dirtiness. Strong. He didn't respect no shot. Mm -mm. I liked that because it made me play that way. He would defend you. The mom stretched out like an orangutan. 
It is the truth. He was like an octopus. You put it up, he's gone. And look how many times you score him, he's coming at you again and again. And he had this relentless ability to be consistent, didn't get tired. Of course, it made you work to be sharper. My young friend back there, he was always this tenacious player with tenacity and drop and quickness and fast. Zorkin Bermin didn't care if his mama was out there playing. He, he applied the same pressure. That's a fact. You all don't understand the tor story. There's one there in Memphis he does. He said, how you make everything interwoven together. And so I liked playing against my young friend because he was young. He was a ball player. He could shoot. He could distribute. He was a baller. And I loved it. I didn't want to check anyone but him. Never wanted to play with him, against him, because I want him to show him some love. And I said to my Ishaw, of all these years I've known him, he has been, I, I don't flatter anyone, he has been one of the most gentlest, compassionate man, men I've met. Even when he was mad, his madness. You see, gentle up Abner, can he get tough at times? Real tough? Bonafide tough? He's a cream puff then. He is one of the most gentlest individuals I've met. Has never dishonored me. Never. He didn't pick that up from himself. He had someone bonafide before him say, boy, I will knock you out. Hmm? That's a fact. Yeah. I said he has been one of the most gentlest individuals and sincere. He has. What about me? Don't worry about you then. You got a problem. Let us esteem others more highly than you. Yeah. That's right, Yosef. Yeah. Let us esteem someone else. Hell, you're always looking for esteem. Let's esteem him. Always check on him. He says, I'm all right, Ray. I'm all right. Y'all keeps him, protects him. Yeah. Stay around me, son. We'll cry together. We'll walk together. Yeah. And I'll break up his boy, too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's so wonderful to have Achim like you all. I really mean that. I'm not going to cry like Zakin Yaramiya. I do cry. That man wants the absolutely best training for his son his daughters, to keep them preserved. And I want it like he is my son. His oldest one getting a little too old for me to kind of hug. She's growing up. And you have to make sure I hug her right. The mothers and fathers that killed their children, a woman I was looking the other day while she poisoned her daughter because she's autistic. And they would say that they loved each other. That's how the rudiment or rudimentary of what we call love is so discarded. You don't know love. Yeah. Your daughters of Tizan, your own your wives that are beautiful wives, you must teach them. You show them what love is. Yeah. You began with the great reverence for your man. 
You don't know what love is, woman. You got an emotional attachment. You're drawn on some sense of That's not love. Can I preach now? That's all right. Just a little preface or a little coffee. Okay, a little water. Little appetizer. No, I want fried chicken for my appetizer. I don't want no adubs. I don't want no green leafy stuff. I want fried chicken. I want a steak biscuit. It's all appetizing to me. That's what I want. I want fried fish. I want fried, as old Dirk would say, chicken wings. I don't want chicken wings. That's too dignified. I want chicken wings. Wings. That's right, mama. I don't want no wings. I want chicken wings. How about that? We're at a time whereby there must be a clear conscience. Whether we're for ya or against him. There's a true sign of a nation that Yah has established in the earth. It is to the zero of the birth of that seed of promise through Abraham, through Yitzhak, Yaakov. He promised, simply implying uh, that he broke loose the wells of life through his dabarim, his words, his words unto Abraham. The life of Torah. And he fulfilled that in Yaakov to build a great nation. And Am Rav Atta, a great nation within the construct of nations, that it may have a profound constitution that the nations of the earth marvel at. And Yaba himself of the aggregate, the sum of who he is and what he is, and he granted that to be known unto the nation of Yisrael through a viable living Torah. Not this damnable, twisted, corrupt thing that came through the lineage of corrupt men of oppressors that we call the American Constitution. That is so vile and corrupt. But the aggregates of the sum of Yah's physiological, sociological, and his spirituality that is the sum of Torah that he grants unto us. And he granted that because of the one whereby the promise and the promises were granted unto Abraham. And then through that same lineage, there came the fall of the nation through the introduction of the gods. I don't know what a God is. I know it's a damn dog. I don't care how tender you are. When I went to boot camp in the military, unfit, out of shape, I remember there on tank here when we first went, never forget. And it was August too, it was hot in South Carolina, hot in Fort Jackson. And they did not call us by name, they called us by social security number. Drill was about six, one, 215 pounds, masculine and strong. And I'm standing there terrified and so afraid, making sure that my knuckles on the seam of my slide. He said, 2429888812. I was lost. I didn't even know. He did it again. And then the third time it dawned on me. Here, Drill, son. He said, You maggot, don't get down. Because he wanted to show me, you can't do push-ups. I did about 20, counted them. I wanted to get up. 
He said, you dog, I didn't tell you to get up. And when you talk to me, you better answer me. You answer me this way. One drill sergeant, two drill sergeant, three drill sergeant. And he said, when you want to get up, you ask, may I please drill sergeant? Of course, I couldn't get torn out the next row. Then I asked, may I please drill sergeant, get up. He said, yes, get up, you maggot. And that was the proper protocol to, to establish the right of passage in us. And soldiers, that we become attuned to his voice. And hear what he says and pay attention. Because if you don't, you are in trouble. We don't hear you. He made a promise unto Abraham because he knew. I want to read this first of all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says in the Torah, I will tell you where I read from this time. But I want you to pay attention and to listen. And I want you to try to read or add on as I teach. All right? Yeah. He says in the book of Bereshit, at the beginning in Genesis, verse, chapter 18 and verse 18, Yah says, seeing that Avraham, he's talking from his I am, his ability to know all things, he says, seeing that Avraham shall surely become a great, and he uses the word osum, a very great, mighty, a powerful nation. Numerically, you cannot count. It shall be a nation with vast enterprise. Not that little strip of land. But many think because they have uh, taken the trek, or sojourned back to that little strip, that it gives them some kind of righteousness uh, that is beyond those that are scattered throughout the land. He said, Abraham shall surely become a great nation. An am, rav atza, a nation that is great. The word rab or rab means that it is the numeric contents of it. It cannot be expressed by the language, linguists of man. It can only be revealed by Yad. He must reveal that to us. He says, seeing that Abraham shall become a great and mighty nation. And then he says this. Yah says, and all, kol, K-O-L-E, the vast of nations, the Gentiles whereby his zira has been spread abroad, that they may hear the voice of Yahshua HaMashiach. He said, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed not for him but in him all the nations all the green not am when yah uses the word am he talks about scattering his people among the am the nations that the tribe of Levi will be scattered with uh, neptali neptali with dan and dan with gad you will not be able to identify one of those individual tribes. He shall scatter his people among the nation. That those that prescribe that Yahud is in America. Levi is in Haiti. And on and on it goes. How in hell do they know? And the simple minded by that. They receive that because they're ignorant. That's why we must lahag. We must meditate day and night. We must study the Torah of Yah. Now I want you all to listen to me, what I'm saying, all right? Don't worry about finding nothing. You haven't found it all these days and all these years. You listen. In order for you to understand the instructor, you, you think a student that's becoming a doctor doesn't listen to every tenet of the mouth of the instructor? We are such a jackass of a dumb people. We think we got something that is of great essence. That when the messenger is speaking, we always looking for something. We need to hear Yisra'ya. That's what we need to do. We have not learned how to hear. You prove all things. You try the word in your own heart and hold fast to that which is tough. So you prove yourself by allowing the word to examine you. 
Oh, he is so mean. Oh, you silly little child. It's almost like a father talking to his son, his son attentive to something else. Stop, boy. Listen to me. Now, you all listen to me, all right? You won't have to be here all day, but you listen. When you listen, you begin to grasp the imunah, the faith of Yah. It comes by hearing. And hearing, you must hear the Torah. Yahshua gave gifts unto men to instruct us. He did not give it unto women or children. He gave it unto men. And a man is an ish. It's a man that has the physicality, the strength, and the beauty, the aura of a man. Because one has the similitude of a man, that doesn't make him a man. Boys. Will you hold that little baby up? Oh, that's all right. Don't wake him up. He's a boy. He has my same similitude as a child. That doesn't make him a man. He has my same similitude, that little child right there. That doesn't make him a man. He has my same similitude. He has my same physical identities. That doesn't make him a man. She has the same similitude of a mother. That doesn't make her a mother. Now let's get the real Yisrael and learn how to be attentive. And to hear, it is, so, it is so rude to do that. Listen, let's just hear. The messenger, stop reading, just open your ears to hear. And then what you know will increase. Hallelujah. Now, I don't give a damn if you don't like me. If you listen to me, you become a beautiful woman. If you listen to me, you become a strong man. You would not listen to me if I was a weak man, would you? Ah. The daughters that love me say, you, you laid us so beautiful. And they prove it by their assistance here, all right? So what you say doesn't mean a damn thing. You haven't assisted us, all right? He says, surely Abraham shall become a great nation, and all the nations, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Can I tell you why? Because Yah has scattered his nation throughout the earth. And there is one profound thing that is pronounced in them when we gather in Yerushalayim, in the city or the place where our minds are, are at Shalom in Torah, whereby we have no doubt as to the essence of this book, whereby the hearing of that reminds us and it stirs up uh, the identity of the pureness uh, of Yah's Torah in us, Yisrael, because he has not done, he has placed it there. This is a generation that go and they're always examining others uh, to see if they're like them. Uh, and they never try themselves by that damnable twisted spirit in them. Uh, oh baby, I try the spirit by the spirit. See what's this, thing. see if it's of God. Well, you, you act like a Jezebel. You act like a two cent Jezebel. How are you going to try my spirit? You're a little effeminate boy. You're not going to try me. Now you need to try that damn double twisted mindset of yours and see whether you be in the emo now. This is the only thing that's going to get us clean. You strubbing on the scrub board, you know, that little ring of washer, then do it all the time. So mama would take that garment and put that in a wash tub and then she would take the scrub board. We need the scrub board. Our minds are filthy. Our ways are filthy. Listen. So in order... To give us as a nation a constitution, the aggregates, the sum of his physical identity with us as a nation, to build character, to build a social concept, that there is a, a social interaction, something is twisted. When there is no social interaction, the, with Yisra'ya. You can with children. I, I never see children really criticizing each other. But we do it. We love to do that, don't we? It's almost like a fat man. I said, now don't get upset with me. He loses a few pounds. He's telling everybody how to lose a few pounds. You haven't even proven yourself, man. You're 350 pounds, you're 300 pounds, and you say, well, look at me. Come on. You haven't proven yourself, man. You have nothing of essence. How are you going to tell someone else? It's best to be quiet and watch the one that has, uh, has a discipline, and you pattern yourself after them. Hallelujah. He said, that must be a strong constitution. 
So he gives us one. Can I read it? Well, I shall, whether I can or not. He says in the book of Dibarim, this is what makes us a great nation. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. I want to begin quickly. <clears throat> First of all, Yah says, Now therefore, He says, I want you to shimach, to hear with the delicacy of obedience, to understand, to comply it to you, it become complicit with your will, and you obey me. That's what shimach is, to hear it. With one implicit idea. That's to obey it. Hallelujah. Obey it. Hallelujah. To obey it. To do what it says. He says, listen, O Yisraya. He says, I want you to listen to my huchi, my statutes, to the limitations of, of what I have prescribed unto you. He says, and not only that, to my mishpatir, my judgment, the excellent of Yah's judgment. He makes himself known unto us by judging us. This is how he clarifies his identity. No damn God judge you. And all gods are the same. I don't give a damn what you say. You can spell it with all capitals or lower cases. It's still a God. Y'all will not denigrate himself with a damn God. But I know who the God of this earth is. He will not share his honor with Hashatan. He's greater than a God. Them all gods, all of them, your Jesus, your Baal, your Belipo, ah, your gods, your lords, damn them all. Your black gods, your white gods, your Jew gods, your Hindu gods. Rich white people serve a different God than the poor white people. Rich Caucasians, their God is different. Arrogant buppy Negroes, their God is different than the poor, ghetto, hood rat God. You can say what the hell you want to. The white Jesus is much more supreme in the upper crescents, in the upper echelon of society than those hillbillies in West Virginia that serve a poor Jesus. And they're both of the same complexion of skin. I don't give a damn if you don't like it. It is a fact. Damn white people. Damn black people. Bless Yisraya. We have opportunity. We do tough unto all men, but especially Yisraya. You do right by all men. You meet a daughter to Zion, you do right by even treat her special. And same thing to you, daughter. You treat Yisraya special. I'm not going to do us wrong, Yisraya. I will leave this place tomorrow before I cause any havoc. I won't take a dime. I won't put you in any burden. That's the truth. It may not be the best thing for me to do that. May not be. May not be the best thing for me to do that. But I would. You will never hear from me. You will never see me again. But I like seeing you. And I like being with you. And I like that dear meat that you all go get. How about that? I like gardening with you. We're going to plant a huge one. You and me, yo, I, I don't want these outsiders to hear. There are those that mock me. Say, I can't do anything small. It's going to be small, but it's going to be huge, all right? Don't worry about it. We got it. Yah says in Dibarim 4, one now, therefore Shabbat Yisraya, to the statutes and to the judgment, which Moshe shall teach, he shall lamad. We must be trained in the ways of Yah. I was not a soldier in the military, they had to train me. And we think that we come with all the essence and all the attributes, uh, that we know everything and we don't know nothing. The volume of a man's beauty will speak from, uh, from his poor name. The beauty of a daughter of Tizan will speak from her walk. Her walk is one of the, of the most beautiful walks uh, upon the earth, Yisraya. She doesn't draw attention, but she draws attention because she's so beautiful. She's what the Torah called Tifra, or uh, Yafet, 
fair. Her beauty is insanely beautiful. That men will honor that. Like Susie Yan, you all read that in the uh, Apocrypha. The world has taught you to be a nothing by shaking your eyes and tightening your titties up and letting someone sit down in your breast. I will, man, look like a piece of nothing. You know if the whores in Hollywood is doing it, you don't do what they do. You don't fashion yourself like them. Hallelujah. I got fine legs. You, you don't have fine legs, woman. Yeah. Y'all talks about the leg of a man, how beautiful and strong they are. He doesn't take no pride in that or, or the beauty of a thoroughbred of a stallion. Your legs don't have the power and the strength of a man. No woman that's listening, no woman that's here can do. Uh, she has the physicality that I have. She cannot do it. She cannot lift the burden of weight that I can lift. It's a fact. You can't even work with me. Not even in the garden. He says, uh, then this is what you must perform. He used this little word. I want you to know that he said, and do them. Asa, do. To allow that to fashion your mind, the concept, we let every kind of damn thing fashion our mind. To do. If I ask us what the word do mean, what well, well, it mean to do? You, you know, you, you, you know. I said to one yesterday, I, you all bear with me. This is y'all's day. I said to one, I said, you know, we are people that know everything, but we are so ignorant. I said, you got a nation like this nation that gets so unraveled. If you say those faggots, they get crazy when you use that. Insensitive. I said you can ask 99.9% of America what the word faggot mean. Although they have dictionaries, their daughters and sons, and nobody can tell you what the word faggot mean. Nobody can tell you what the word faggot mean. Nobody can tell you what the word faggot mean. Even the faggots can tell you that they call themselves faggots. They're dogs. Can I tell you what the word faggot mean? It means a bundle of sticks. Look it up. It means a bundle of metal. It means any type of bundle. And then there's a food that, that they serve in Sweden, in Switzerland. It is called the haggot. Many times people will enunciate it, the faggot. But that's what the word faggot means. How do you know that? Because I'm attuned to words. And I'm constantly examining the thought process because I know we're going to be judged by every word. They're not faggots. They're dogs. Hallelujah. So we think we know and we don't know. And we will debate things that we don't even know. Will we not? Yah says, I want you to do. I want you to assa. I want you to perform. Not only when you do something, he said, I want you to accomplish what it instructs you to do. When mama said, I want you to go in there and do your homework, she, didn't, she did not mean 99%, did she? She meant 100%, did she? Did she check it to make sure it was right? Sure she did. When someone assigns you a responsibility on the job and says, this is what I want you to do every day. That doesn't mean you alleviate or you alter the process. You must do it, right? So you must accomplish the protocol of what is expressed for you to do. You must accomplish that. And so he said, I want you to do them. Why? He said, I want you to do what my statute says. This is our constitution. That you may hire. That you may live. You may have life in your bosom. That you may sustain life. You may be strong, Yisra'ya. Yeah. That this is what will keep us alive forever. That you may haya, not hayil, but haya. You may live your life. And the power of the promises of Yah yeah. may be sustained in you. The revelation of Yahshua, not your damn dog, Jesus. May have liveliness in you. Not only that, when we hire, he says, uh, or oh, that's his name, Havoshawa. Now, his name is just what it is, Yah, Almighty Yahweh. He is the one that has no beginning. He says that when we keep the commands of Yah, may restore us to health. I said to my Isha last night, I said, I, I'm always looking at simple things because I think simple. I don't want to think grandizing and to think that I have more knowledge than anyone. I don't have a damn thing. What I know there are millions that have known it before me, so I'm not the originator of anything. You understand? I know how to listen. I said to my Isha, I said, look at this. I said, I printed out this chart because I, I, I wanted to look 
and see the life expectancy of people in other countries. Japan leads the nation, the world. The expectancy of men and women. Then you got Italy and little countries within Italy. You got places like that. And I said, Raphael, Yah gives us a Torah dietary law, doesn't he? I say, if he had said, eat swine, we could, would that be all right? I said, so you think the longevity is because we're eating that animal with the spitted hoof, chews it cuts? I say, Japanese people eat everything. They eat anything in the ocean that moves, some of the most filthiest thing. They eat it, but yet their life expectancy is very long. They worship the Hindu gods or, or, uh, and different spirits, and their God is just like Jesus, all right? It's a God. And they worship all of that, and, and they live. I say, what is the life for us? I say, because we obey. Did he not say Shema Yisraya? I say, it is that we obey what he says. We apply it to our hearts. That's where our strength and the promises come, as that we obey it. They eat every kind of thing come out of the ocean. I don't care what it is. They eat it. Yah says, I want you to obey me. Shema, I want you to hear, O Yisrael, what the statutes, the laws, and what I command you. He said that you may have life. We don't have excellent health. Our health is bad. Our young women, our young men have no strength. Our bodies are not even durable for any kind uh, of any kind of challenge. Just tell the truth. Uh, we're grossly overweight. We eat. We have no thought of our consumption. Let's, uh, we won't eat truth. We won't eat Torah. But we eat every damn thing there is. Let's get real now. We're not ashamed, Yisrael. And we don't want to deal with that. But we can speak against others. But we don't speak against ourselves. Isn't that amazing? I will go ahead. Can I? He said that you may have higher in the land and you will go possess the land which Yah grants unto you by the, your avat. I'm going to teach that in a dynamic way because we have the camera. Where I can sit it here and show you the pictures and do it in my office. I will teach that soon. He says unto us in Dibarim 42, you do not add, don't yourself. Don't add nothing. Don't do no more than what it tells you. Well, I love him. I want to do more. No, no, just do what you're told to do. That's all he asks you to do. Yes, half is say, do just what you're told. Don't do no more. When I work with somebody, no, 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 no. Just do what I ask you to do. Don't do no more. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? And when you do more, I say, get out of my way. Go over there and say, get out of my way, man. I'll do it. I will do it. What I ask you to do, my friend, just do that. And when you finish that, just stand there. If you have to stand there for an hour, sit down. Drink some water. But just do what I ask you. So that's what all y'all saying. Just do what I ask you. He said, you should not add to the word which I command you. I survive. I have the authority to command you. Neither shall you gara. Shall you cause it to be a minuscule and you do away with it. He said, don't take anything from it that you may keep. Why? So when we began to take from Yah's Torah, we don't even keep the mitzvah of Yah our Abba, which we have been instructed to do the mitzvah. The mitzvah to love Yah with all, your, love your neighbor as yourself. Upon these hinge all the beauty of the Torah of Yah. You can't say you love Yah when we have the spirit of Ovina, oh Father, we're cold with our ark, we're cold with our heart. But you're cold. No, daughters, I just don't. I, I love you, daughters. That's, I respect you. I just don't chat with you. Well, what about Zakin Yaramaya's wife? I talk to her just like I do Zakin Binami's wife. Uma Akio I will not this under his house. Ayawasada. There's some older ones I'll talk to. But the remainder, I don't talk to. For what? What are we going to talk about? I'll talk to her man. What are we going to talk about? Tell me, please. I would not disrespect Achya Bin. Just uh, see him. He, just talk to him like, hey, hey, sister, you. Ah. I won't do him like that. 
That's the greatest of dishonor. And neither will I take time with the daughters of Tizayon to move them out of their place of beauty and try to talk to them and try to create some sensual environment. I won't do that. And I'm not going to do it. I've only known this woman. And that's all I want to know in any kind of way. These dogs out there don't say that because I don't give a damn what a man or woman has done. When they come to the knowledge of Yah, they do it no more. And I'm talking about those, I'm talking about those that say they know Yah and they're doing some of the most perverted, wicked things upon the face of the earth. So I'm not going to play with sisters. I'm not going to laugh with them. If I'm going to laugh, I'm going to laugh with an ark. And I don't do much laughing. I don't even do much laughing with my Israel. That's just a fact. It's time to cry now. It's time to cry. He says that you may keep the mitzvah that Yah Yoba has command, commanded you. He said, your eyes, your iron, your spiritual depth, it has been revealed unto you. I want you all to remember this now. He says, has been seen what Yah because of what Yah has done because of Bel Beor, the Lord of the Gap. The Lord, Be'al. Jesus Christ is the Lord. Baby, he come every year. Damn Jesus, a dirty lie. I'll show you where it came from. I don't give a damn if you don't like what I say. And those that have been calling me, they say, well, Ria, you know the word. I said, I have a 1611. Show me where you find Jesus. Please, show me. It's a damn hybrid lie. And these damn fools hold on to it. It's a damn hybrid lie. It's a damnable lie. We speak English. You speak a marauding language that has stole from every language of the earth. They don't speak. They speak English, but they say hallelujah. What stupid simpletons. They're fools. Hallelujah. He said, I want you to know what I did to Be'el Piora. He said, for all the men that followed the Lord, now Be'el, uh, he said, Yah, your Abba has destroyed. He has, uh, sure, ha, he has eviscerated. He's going to destroy all the Lord followers. I'm telling you, this is, the, this is the demise of any nation. I will show you where that spirit comes from. Anytime you're dealing with a God, you're dealing with a demon power. Any time you address Yah as God, you're dealing with the demon spirit. I wish, can I show you? I'm going to get through that today if I get through nothing else. The great nation, its downfall, how it is established, the constitution, and then the death of any great nation, Yisrael. He says unto them, uh, he says, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgment, even as Yah, my Abba, he commanded me that you should do. You should assault. You should perform. You should assimilate your mind into the guidance of what he has commanded that you should do. So, you should do them. He said, when we do that for he said, this is our wisdom. This is our hukmah. This is our wisdom. This is our intelligence to be skillful, to fight. We're set for defense of the truth. Of Torah. So we become skillful when we become wise. You got to, to be taught to become skillful to fight, right? I'm a soldier boy, so they, they had to make me skillful. And so when I would walk through those airports at 165 pounds, you couldn't tell me nothing. It's her fault that I'm this big, all right? She says you're too little. It's her fault. Now I'm too big. It's the truth. He said, this is your wisdom and your bina, your ability to discern and to know. Why? In the sight of the nations. It, it is why the nations will know that we are great. Not because you got dreadlocked. Not because you're on the corner hollering at everyone, uh, telling the women they're whores and sluts. Because they dress differently. Now woman, you don't wear pants. You got the daughters of Tizayon. Uh, take them off. I just don't wear them. It's wrong. You showing your anatomy like that? That women 300 pounds with them on with these little skirts. They look a mess. And we would do that if we were out there in that system. 
You look a mess. They have no shame either. They have no shame. You see, everything that is private is filthy. It's not of Yah. It may be of God, but it's not of Yah. Well, I don't see anything wrong with this. These are these same jackasses. They call themselves Hebrews. Well, it's all right uh, for a woman to wear pants. And yet they were raised hell by Tyler Perry wearing a dress. And these men put on dress. I ask you, jackass, uh, put on a dress. You start wearing dresses. Would it look all right if I had on a dress today? She had on what I got on. I got on what she got on. I got on her pumped and I'm looking like her. No, it wouldn't be right. Remember my grandmother's an old woman. She was a wicked old thing. I never saw in pants. She wore dresses. And the cotton fields in the side. Saskia I love picking cotton. I was just that ignorant. Didn't know I love picking. Young boy, I love getting out there in the fields and picking it. This is a stupid nation. We're so full of pride, we want to say we know it all. I don't know everything. I know what I need to tell you today, though. Yeah. I know everything I need to tell you today. Yeah. How about that? I know what I need to tell you. He said, now this shall be the greatness in the sight of all the nations which shall hear. They shall understand, they shall hear, they shall hear, they shall hear, they shall hear all these statutes. This is why we are great, not because we say we're Hebrews, not because we say we, we dress a certain way, we dress the Sadiq way. We cover ourselves as men. We cover ourselves as daughters. He said, when they shall hear of your statutes and say, surely this is a great nation. This is an Am Rav Atta. This is a great nation within this nation, uh, which is wise. It is a nation that is hacham. It's a nation that is skillful. Nation that is wise, a nation that is prudent, the men of understanding, you can go for counsel. You can go to the beautiful daughters of Tizayon and get counsel in anything. We are so damn grumpy with attitudes. We don't know how to be kind. You, if you, listen, daughters, you don't know how to be kind to your sister. You can be kind to, to a husband. Man, you don't know how to be kind to your up. You can be kind uh, to, to a wife. There's no differentiation in the love of Yah. He commands us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. He didn't tell you to love your children or your wife more than love anyone else. He didn't tell you to love your mother that way. He says, honor your mother and your father. You show them reverence. You don't have to be a part of their lies and their follies. I will tell them, I'll tell you what, I, I can't break up your beautiful event. I, I won't come. Well, you know, you're welcome. I said, I understand that. But I don't want to be a part of this folly. And I will not go. I will not go to the eat outs and the cookouts and the dinner outs. I've been a loner all my life ever since a 22 year old young lad, ignorant. And I'm not stunted. I don't feel bad at all. Got nieces and nephews, I don't even know them. If I saw them on the street, I would not even know them. I'm a great, great uncle. Maybe a third great. Wouldn't know who I am if I saw them today. You all may become sensitized to that, but I'm not. I'm not. He says that the nations will say that you are wise and understanding people. There's only one thing that will separate us. It's the Torah, or the constitution of the Torah. It is the sum of the aggregate of whom Yah is and what his wisdom represents, what his knowledge represents, that he pours out in us. That is the only thing that makes us separated from all nations. Nothing else. Do we stink like a man that sleeps on the street day and night? Well, don't take a bath for two days and then, uh, and then touch certain parts of your body and tell me how you smell. Just don't do it, all right? Don't brush your teeth for a week. I'll tell you what, don't take a bath for a week. And you go out on the street and find one that you think is a hobo or a bomb or a derelict. Smell him and let him smell you. You daughters of Tizayon, don't take proper attention to your body. And just do it for a week and tell me, what's the, what's, what's the awful smell that's coming from? All flesh is as grass. It's going to die. It's going to die. It all stinks. We're not somewhat of a special quality because, of a, because my skin is of the dark hill. And because I keep the Torah of God. This is my constitution that makes me great above all nations. I have no problem with the laws of, of America. 
They don't hinder me. They can watch. Put a satellite over me and watch me day and night. And you may see me cut a little wig for you. Praise. Yeah, because I'm always looking on. I'm always doing that. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Total. Uh, I'm not ashamed. You can be all stiff. You need some elasticity and lubrication to your bones. You can do it to your stiff. Why you do it, man? Because I want to stay limbo. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I get older, said, Oh, man, I want to walk like him. He's my example here. Walk like him. I want to walk like the elders. Strong. What nation is so great that the sovereign master is so karab that he is so near to them that he approached them, that his Torah approaches them, to them? As Yah our Abba is in all things that we call upon him for all that we need. Gibarim 4 and 8. And what nation that is so great that has the hukim and the mishpatim and the sadiq of all this Torah, of all the wisdom of guidance. What nation that the one that is the queen of all things, that is all things in all things, that he will show them the psalm of his mind. We think we're getting by. We call ourselves the sadak, and then we scarcely make it where you think uh, the wicked shall appear. We are more wicked than the wicked. The wicked can be kind to each other. And we don't even know how to be kind. Phony as they come. You tend to be men. Don't exemplify the type of spirit of women. They don't. I see my Akim. He's to say, yeah, man, you look straight. Handsome, man. Look at you. I like that. Women tend to shun each other because of the jealousy. I see men in the street. I don't talk to many people. I say, hey, how you doing, man? <laughs> Even though they're sharp and tight, sometimes men get a little intimidated. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a man thinking a woman is voluptuous and what we call extreme in her appearance. Most men will be afraid to, to say anything or look at it. Same thing with a woman when she sees a man that she considered that's bona fide. She's afraid to. I don't care what she looks like. We are the beauty of the excellence of Yah. So when men see us and women see us, they say, who is that? We should walk with the dignity of strength. Our stride should pronounce the honor of Yah. I don't care if I'm dirty and my face is dirty. That is what I do. Oh, you, you're full of pride. No, I have no pride. None. Mm -mm. If I had pride, I certainly would. I got work to do around here and hard work too. I, that's all. I stretch my head all the time. Well, I got to get this done. I got to get that done. I got to do that. Just, okay, we got to do this. We got to do that. And believe me, I am uh, one that know how to balance things. I know how to prioritize things. And I will get it all done. If I get that one thing, I got that done. This may crop up again, but that's all right. I got it done. I don't want to sit idle. That's why most people, when they sit idle, they have nothing to do but think about but their God, their belly. That's why we're in the shape that we're in. That's just mentally, spiritually, and all. Y'all help me get through this first portion today. He says, a nation and what nation, Deuteronomy 4, 8, and what nation is so great, so gadola, that has such statutes and judgment that is so righteous as all this Torah, which I set, he bestowed that or not found that upon us. He said, I set before you this day. And he used that word, O-N-L-Y. In the tongue of our forefather, it is rak. Rak. It is emphasized. He said only. Only. He did not sum. When you see the word only, in, even in our vernacular, it is to pronounce and to be pacific, to emphasize that particular, doesn't it? Sure it does. 
It doesn't hurt to look things up. That'll help you. That's what it means. It's an emphasis. It's an emphasizing. It emphasizes. He says, only, only take heed to your ach, your achim. To who? To who? Only take heed to yourself. Deuteronomy 4 9. Only take heed to yourself. You know something is twisted in you when you take heed to others. Something is twisted. You watch the way they walk and say, Well, you're not walking right. Well, how are you walking, my friend? You're not talking right. How are you talking? He said, Only rak. We don't take heed to ourselves. He said, only take heed to yourself. He says, and I want you to shema, to guard, to keep your nephesh diligently. You know what diligently is? The Torah uses the word mi'ud. It is to exercise a bona fide strength of tenacity. It is to exert an effort that is beyond your control or ability to sustain it. It is to do without your wherewithal or what you draw from. That is, that, that is what that means to do diligently. It is when a man gets in the fields and he works. And he, and he doesn't allow his physicality uh, to diminish or to take from his ability to labor beyond his ability. That's what we must do. That's what we mean. Us. We must do Yisra'ya. This is the strength of any nation. This is the strength. Of any nation. We are a corporation, but we are foolish because we've learned how to be selfish and greedy as a pig. That's a fact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, You keep your nephesh diligently. Why? He said, Unless you you forget. Do we keep him in our mind day and night as the old folks say? Got him in my mind. Oh, I got him in my walk. I know I don't have the words right, mama, but that's all right. Got him all over me. Oh, I do. Oh, I got him in my walk. See, you're all trying to make me sing like you, but I'm not. Got him in my talk. Oh, I got him all over me. Yes, I do, baby. Got him, got him in, in my thoughts day and night. Got Yeshua, Yeshua on my mind. That's how the old mother was singing it. Oh, I got him in my bed, got him in my wash tub. Oh, I bathe in the word of Yamabad. Got him on me day and night. I dress myself in him. You see, that's how they did it. Yeshua, Yeshua. The little one's always singing to me. The songs that I say, how beautiful. Go ahead and sing. Ah, go ahead, Lil Yaramiya. Sing, boy. He said, at least you forget them because that's what we forget. We forget the abundance of Yah, the beauty as a nation, as a person. At least you forget what he commands you, the things which your eyes have seen. And at least they depart. When something departs, it is removed, isn't it? And at least it is put away from your thoughts. He said, Lisa, least depart from where? Not just, he says, from your life. You think this little muscle that beat and pumped blood, this, outer, this, this muscle here? No, he's talking about here, Lisa, depart from your life uh, all the days of your life. He said, but you teach them to your sons and your son's son. You must teach them to the patriarchs of the structure of your house. You teach them to your sons, that they may teach their sons' sons, that they may protect the daughters of Tezayon. That they may honor the daughters of Tizayon. No raping, no pillaging, no destroying their lives. That's what we must do. And a great nation shall rise out of the rudiment of darkness. Of all kind of, of evil. Their wealth shall be great. Their finances shall be great. That's what it shall be. You see what we call this migration. Those that will go back to that little strip of land. That they call Israel. That's not Israel. 
I'm going to show us and teach us the promises and the kingdom of David. If you ask the vast people, show me, do you understand what the kingdom of David consisted of? And it did not go under to Roboam, the son of Shalomo, uh, brought death. And how did he do it? By the power of the God, by the power of his youth and his nature. He disregarded the ancient. He disregarded the ancient men. He disregarded the Yoshish. He didn't hear what they had to say. He disregarded them. And that's what we do. We disregard the counsel of the ancient. We listen to a dirty God, a belly that is the God. He said, when you do those, you're going to be a great nation. And nations will see the multitude of the riches of my blessings upon you. And they will be blessed in Avraham. They will join themselves to you for protection. They will join themselves unto you because of the richness of your counsel. And they will go forth and they will be circumcised in heart. Why? Because you know, Yah must not lose one of his people. So he must, and he scoured the world by the Ruach. He is Ruach. And men must be filled with the Ruach because his nation, they become so part of the nation, they're Gentiles. What is a Gentile? Well, we as, in our learning, we learn that a Gentile is a heathen, right? Come on, Yisra'ya. Well, anybody did not worship God, as we would say, they were heathens, right? So they're heathens because they're worshiping every God but Yah. They're heathens because they're worshiping every God but Yah. Isn't that what we were taught? Isn't that what we learned? Oh, them heathens. Uh, that boy act like a heathen. He don't, that boy don't know God. Come on, Yisra, yeah. He's a heathen boy. So they're heathens. And we act like heathens. We go on every bay tree like Yisra'ya and they sought out every god. They sought out the Bellapora, all the gods, they worship them. And so the rudiment of that is in us today. And so that's why he must, he told them to go into all the world and teach. And you must immerse them in the power of my name. They must know that I constitute the name of Yahshua. Jackass of a nation. Do you baptize in the name of the loud Jesus? No. Damn Jesus. That's what they ask you. I you must know how you do it. Why you call me. Why you call me. Well, I want to know. Well, then. Do you want me to miss you? Well, you're terrible how you do it. Go to hell. Find you someone that will. Coddle and capitulate. Oh, oh, he is so nasty and cold. You know, people will say I'm cold, and there are women that will talk to their husbands in a way that is so wicked. And they will never say, Well, they are cold. Cannot go around. The men that will talk to their Isha like she's a cop of that. Shut your mouth. Don't write me, okay? Don't mess with me. Just don't mess with me. Mess with other boys out there. Don't mess with this one. You'd be surprised. There, there have been 275 plus thousand, nearly 280,000 people come to our website in 2013. 1,000 plus gigabytes. People listen. People tell others about us, but they, they won't dare. Mm -mm. He, he scares me. No, it's your sin that scares you. He doesn't speak well of women. I love women. I got a wife. I got, I tell my little girl, I say, now you, you growing up, you got, to, you got to be the example of a beautiful daughter to your little sister. I have Emma. My Emma, my daughters. I love them. I just don't like a Jezebel. I don't like that spirit on no woman. I don't like it. I don't care who she is. I let her know. I don't like it. It's wrong. The attractiveness of any woman, not because she's fine as a Coke bottle, not that she's voluptuous, there's only one thing that makes her fine. Can I tell your daughters? She is high in. She has life and strength and beauty for the love of Torah. Not how you fix your damn hair. You dress in your fancy frock. 
You think your lips are gorgeous? She's high you. She's a virtuous woman. Not virgin. Beth Ula, she's high you. Her stride, as Miss Mickle would say, you girls, you walk like this. Never forget Miss Mickle. Never. She taught the girls how to walk, and we as boys, I was at Miss A. See, that's what he would do. <laughs> oh, clean. <laughs> we get back there. <laughs> and we were mocking. Oh, you could walk like this, girls. Miss Mickle taught them how to walk with dignity, not twisting your hips. And Miss Mickle was somewhat of a short, I'll never forget how she looked. She had uh, her teeth, she had a plate here. Never forget, she's a heavy woman, but I liked her. We're in those segregated classrooms now. She taught them, and we will mock that. And the girls that retained that, their beauty exemplified that now. Even though they have a beauty that is not corrupt. It's not corrupt. And those that retain that the boys didn't try to hit on them. But the ones that were loose as a damn pocket of chain. Change. Those are the ones. So I teach you things to make your beauty to, to solidify your beauty, daughters. That's what makes you beautiful. Because you're high yield. You have strength. You have the beauty of Torah. You have the... Discipline of Torah. Not honey, you're trying to make it tight so everybody can see what you got. You ought to be ashamed what you're revealing because it doesn't look pleasant. Hallelujah. Put on something loose, baby girl. Hallelujah. I'll tell her, no, you take that off. Something tight on your eyes. You got a man behind you, an elder. Yeah. Not that he's looking at you, but you don't do that. Hallelujah. Take it off, Heifer. How about that? Hallelujah. You might as well love me. Yes, I love everybody, but do you love me? Well, you know, Ray, I, I know I love, I know I love you, but but you got some stuff I don't like. Do you love y'all? Oh yeah, baby. Does he say things you don't like? Well, show me why I say something that he didn't say. Can I proceed? Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, anytime your mind goes away from this, anytime you lose it, can I read that one last thing again? He says uh, in Debarim 4 9, he says, Least you forget. With Chava and Adom, did he give them a Torah? He said, Every tree of the garden you can eat, but that tree of the knowledge of Tav and Rah. He said, don't even touch it. See, this is what brings a great nation down. It is the creation of the God's mind. And everybody's a God. That's why the Torah says, you are gods because uh, Hashatan told you what a God was. I want to begin here because I want to move rapidly, all right? It says here in the book of Bereshit Genesis. Genesis again, Bereshit Genesis. This is what Hashatan said and he calls blindness. To come upon the minds of a nation of people. Out of that. We can see the great reward of that blindness. Genesis chapter 3 verse 5. He says for Yah knows. For Yah Yada. Yah understand he's insightful. For Yah knows that the Yam. The day you eat thereof. The day you defy what Torah says. The day you began to establish your own derek. Your own way. Your halach. You began to walk the way you are inspired to walk. He said the day that you eat that off. He told them that her that you eye in. Your eyes. Your spiritual senses. Your eye in. Your mental faculties. Uh, there shall be a volume uh, of that shall flow uh, from you. Because we know that out of the belly. Shaul tell us it is the God of our own belly. Out of the belly flows the issues of life. That's why your tongue speaks the way it speaks. The day you defy Yah, the day you say, damn what you say, the day he knows, he say, Yah knows, that the day you eat thereof, your eye in your eyes shall be pokat. It shall be open. Your sensitives, your, sensitive, your senses shall, uh, shall be proactive. 
And they will be gone to guide you. We are guided by what we see and smell. Man, that's some fried chicken. I like to. Sometimes I walk out of my office and I can smell this flavor down here. That's fried chicken there, baby girl. Bring me some. Three pieces. I don't want no two pieces. Bring me four pieces. Talk to me. He says he knows that your eye end will be open and you shall be as God. Not you're going to be as him. You're going to be as God, as Elohim. Now this is the power of every God. Knowing. Is that what it says? Yada, knowing what is tough and evil. What is, quote, you would say, good and evil, unquote. That's all he said. That's all a God knows. A God established. Can I ask us a question? Someone instructs us, you can say, well, you can say what you want to. I know I'm right. You've never said that in all your life, have you? Yeah. Talk to me, Yisrael. Yeah. Nobody tells you a damn thing because you say, I am a supreme God. Yeah. But see, the Torah answers all things. The Torah. Yeah. We go to the Torah, we examine ourselves, you say, oh, I'm wrong. But we don't do that. See, what you call good is your own ways. What you call, quote, good, they're your own ways. There's a way that seems right unto man. Do your ways seem right? Or the way I'm talking to you out there, you all here, does it seem right? It doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right. But the way you would prescribe to what is right, it is so wrong. Because you don't give a damn. You don't give a damn about Yisrael. And there are those that will say, you're so wrong in your prescription. It's not right. But yet your wicked ways are right. There's a way that seems right unto man. But the end thereof is death. It is smooth. You die prematurely. That you don't love Yah. You don't love Yisrael. And you find yourself uh, an estranged one from the commonwealth. You began to go about establishing what? Your own righteousness, don't you? We are a self-righteous generation. We establish our own righteousness. Oh, they, th those sisters are not right. You, Jezebel, you're not right. All oh, those, ach, they, they, don't, they don't love you. You jackass of a fool. You don't know what love is. Everybody knows what love is. You ask them, what is love? Can I show you what love is? Can I tell you what Yachan says? Here it is, love. That you keep the mitzvah of Yah, the commandment. That's love. If any man says he has love and keep not the commandment, he's a liar. Yeah. So you're a damn liar. Oh, I know I love you. You're a damn liar. If you don't keep the commands of Yah, the mitzvah of Yah, he tells us these commandments. We shall not take the name of Yah in vain. Shav. To say it's empty. Your shoes I can't make my father's name. You say you love him, you break that, you're a damn liar. Well, I keep the Shabbat, you break this. You damn Jesus thumpers, you're a damn liars. That is a mitzvah of Yah. You are a damn liar. Yeah. He didn't come in no Greek Roman name. No damn hybrid punk fight name. I know it's a punk fight name because that's what that Jesus looked like, a damn punk. Just like all the rest of them, the black ones, the brown ones, the Mexican. I've seen them in all nationalities. I like stirring the pot. Now that filth. Get all that dross at the top and then I'm going to skim it off for you. How about that? You might as well love me. Man that is honest with us. Tell us the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Greet you all that have joined us. Ark Davis, uh, you said that other day I talked to you. To you, you said, preacher man, we need the paddle. Put it on us. That's what he said. He said, you take it out right, man. Pull it out. So I shall, my friend. Can I proceed? The day you defy Yah, you will become as a God. Verse 6. And when the woman saw, I want you to hear this because I want you to see what was produced out of this, the attributes. And when the woman saw that the tree was tough for food uh, and that it was pleasant, uh, it, was uh, uh, it was nice to lust for. It was a spirit of lust, not because it was pleasant. She just lost it. It was a covetous sense that her eyes to the eyes and that the tree to be desired, look at this, to make one wise. See, to make one wise. God gives us a Torah to make us wise that the nations will say you're wise. 
that the nations will say you're so wise and understanding that there is no nation like you. Isn't the Torah of Yah what makes us wise? Yeah. And yet she said to defy Yah is what makes one wise. Yah said don't, the devil said do. You become a God, all gods are the same. Let no one trick you. Yeah. Well, he's a God with a big G. That is so stupid, even as a young man. I, could, I mean, how is that? I mean, God, and I searched the annals, I searched the chronicles of the word God. How do you define it? They still define the same. And even as I found myself as a young ignorant fool trying to defend it, you could not defend it. <clears throat> he said to make, she said to make one wiser. So she took of the fruit thereof and she did eat. She gave it to her husband and he did eat. See, it was not the man that was caught in transgression. It was the woman. It was not the man that was deceived. It was the woman. That's why any man that allowed his woman to run him, he's not even, he's not even a man. He's not even effeminate. Y'all going to destroy all effeminate men. Anytime a woman calls herself bullying up at a man, she's a bull dagger. She's a bona fide slut of a bull dagger, a bulldog, a bulldog, a bulldog. How about that? She honors her man. He's the final arbiter. Uh, these whores that have told you that, smoking pipes and pull off their dresses, I'm a, I'm a woman, man. You're a bull dagger. You're a dirty whore. You're a slut. You're a dog. You know what the matter is that you don't talk to him that way. It is a quiet answer that turns away wrath. Just don't say nothing to me. I like that. You're tough on you. Know, people think I'm tough on my rough. I am tough. Tough love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't know what love is. Yeah. That's all right, isn't it? Hmm? I know that's right. Hallelujah. Can I proceed, my friend? All right. Do you defy Yah, you're going to become wise, to make one wise. So she ate and she gave it to her husband. There are wives that will cause their husbands to become so diametrically opposed to Yisra because of her lies. Eat my fruit, my peri, eat my lies. You just don't know how they treat me. You don't know how I've watched that here over the many years. Did you say stop? Okay, my friend. And I watched the lies. And the weak boys. Well, they treat my wife wrong. They don't do it right. Hell, your wife didn't know how to treat nobody. Your daughters of Tizayon, if it's one thing you learn, you learn how to be kind and kindly affectionate to the daughters of Tizayon. Learn how to be kind to each other. If you learn how to be kind to them, you will be kind to husband man. And you will be a sought out precious gem that men would seek out. Not because she got big titties, honey. Not because your titties are big. Not because you got big hips. Because you have a beauty that accentuates the character and the quality of a well-balanced daughter of Tizayon, a jewel, precious than a ruby. You don't get that way because you want to get that way. You have to be taunt. You have to polish a ruby. It has to be cut. It has to be refined. That's what it is. You don't want to be cut. You don't want to be refined. The Torah Shirak says that a tough wife should be granted unto the wise men of Yisrael. So you make yourself beautiful daughters. I'm not going to ever stop talking like that because I want our daughters to be qualified. These are beautiful young daughters back here. She's growing up, she's a young, both of them are young women. They're as equal as women as their mother in the sense they both can have babies. That's a right. So mama teach them everything it is of the essentials and the beauty of a woman. Teach them to keep themselves, to be chastened. They see the beauty of their father as he interacts with their mother. Besides, we don't see that. A beautiful young girl. She's not unattractive. Don't let the world tell you that. You don't have to put on no tight ass dress and no pants. 
Those that do that, they have babies before they're out of their teens. And y'all keep you, young daughter. And he'll cause you to be granted unto a wise man one day that will love you. He will love you. Because you will learn how to honor him and regard him and his dignity. You won't talk down to him. You will talk up to him. When I felt like a nothing, when I had no strength of character as a man, my woman would always tell me, ain't nothing you can't do. I felt like a piece of dumb. You can do anything. You're so smart. Hell, we both was ignorant. And still are. I know you can. If you don't do it, y'all will get somebody else. Don't forget those words. Never told me you're nothing. You can't do that. Sorry piece of this. God's my heart fix on you alone, yeah. On you alone. On you alone. Yeah. Show the great despair, doubt. You can. You're smart, man. Broke as they come, still broke. Isn't that amazing? All these years, still broke. Don't have a nickel. Don't even have a banking account. That's sad. I don't have a dime to my name. Send an offering, you hypocrites. You sit there and you watch and you get your belly full. Bless this labor here. So she gave me strength when I had no strength. Her honor did. The beauty of her words. Her honor. When I was frustrated, the beauty of her honor. I could never forsake that. And she better not forsake me. Hallelujah. Why are you doing that? Because marriage is an honorable thing and the bed is on the fire. I don't do this often, but I have a wife. I appreciate that. She's been a help me to me. She's made me strong. Her obedience, her ability not to interfere. I'm the man woman. Shut your mouth. Hallelujah. 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 This is the first act that they perform. Bereshit. I want to get to this because I want to get into the depths of the fall of every nation. Not in the fall where a nation fall in supplication. The falling of a nation. Genesis 3 and 7. It says, and then the eyes of them both, they were open, Yisra'ya. And it says, and they knew that they were naked. A room. Now it has the connotation that one has undressed. But it's much more powerful than that. A room. A room. A room. They knew then. Can I tell you, son? They knew then that they were shrewd. And they were subtle. Was not Hashatan the most subtle creature in the garden? That's why we need men to labor in Torah. And the daughters to be wise to listen and to hear. That you may comprehend the depth and the breadth of the wisdom of Almighty Yah. And quit talking to yourselves. That you may be the example and the power of his strength. That's what a woman is for. She exudes the strength of her mind. She helps him to be strong. To master all things. Most women think it's just a bad thing. Stop it. They knew that their eyes were open and then uh, it says that they were naked. They were a room. They knew that they were subtle. They were shrewd. They knew their acts were crafty and subtle with deceit. They knew that that was that. And they conceded in their own hearts that we're prudent and wise now. Who's more wiser than you? You know every 
Don't we know everything? We will debate with the best of the debaters. We know everything. Well, I know he says that, but his name is the loud Jesus. You're a damn liar. His name is Yoshua. Jesus is a damn lie, an effeminate little faggot, a bundle of sticks, all he is. How about that? You get upset, I don't care. I say things, when people call me, first thing I ask them, have you listened to me? Oh, I have, but I know they haven't listened to me. I can tell the ones that have listened to me, they write me, I can tell, because they know what they're dealing with. The last little family came here, they hadn't listened to me. I knew that, but I said, okay. I knew they were near Acme Kaya, then Cincinnati. That's okay. That's why I don't like letting people come here. I had said to the Zakhine that we're not going to let them come. They don't support. If one listens, they will support this. And there are those that I will. <clears throat> you understand? When they listen to me, it will cause them to examine themselves deeply. They will. Listen to me, one or two little messages. That's it. No, you got to listen. Then you begin to say, he's bad to the bone. Yeah. Like I hope that she say, Riak, I love you. You're bad to the bone. I like the way you talk that talk. I know they don't listen. I can tell the ones that listen. I can tell the ones that listen when they call or write. I know they've listened. I know that they have listened. I know the ones that haven't listened. He says this. They knew that their eyes, their eyes were open and they, and they were naked. And then they began to sew together fig, fig leaves together. They made themselves apron or chagor. They covered their loin. See, their loin was not covered with truth, was it? And our loin be covered with the breastplate of righteousness with the truth of Yah. They covered their loins. And then look at this. And they heard the voice of Yah walking in the garden. And the ruach of the day. And this is it. And Adam and Hava, his wife, it says they habra, they hid themselves. I watch people that have come here and they hide from the Torah. They sit beside hide someone and they hide themselves. And they hide themselves in their flesh. You understand? I watch it. I say, uh, you think you're hiding? That's all right. It says they Chaba. They drew together to do their secretive work and to lie, to lie because they had allowed that spirit to be birthed in their mind. And I will show you the power of that spirit, all right? They hid themselves from the presence of Yah among the trees in the garden. And that's what they did. They hid themselves. They cut a shonda, they, cut, they separated the tides and the core between them and Yah. And this is the tie. That's why Yah says, don't forget the constitution. This is what ties us to Yah Yisrael, Yah. This is what ties us to Almighty Yah. They knew that they were wise. They were a Rom. They were crafty and shrewd. And they were manipulative. And they manipulated one another. Their eyes were open. And we think we have such wisdom and understanding. We think that we got all the concepts of life, we, life laid out, don't we? Yah? And we really don't have anything at all. We have no mastery of anything at all, Yisra'ah. Yeah. I don't make friends. I don't make many friends. Because I care for Yah's people. You're not going to get this in many places that they are. We're going to identify who you are, your physical characteristics and all of that jive. And you're still slutting around like a dirty whore woman. And you're still a little faggot boy, laying with everything there. They don't even touch on the sins uh, of corruption among themselves. Uh, these faggot men, they don't touch on that. And the men have no use of the women because uh, there's no delight in them. If a man wanted that kind of satisfaction, it wouldn't be tough. He can say, boo, girl. Girl, I'm saying poo because my, look at you. That's it. You talk like that. That's, you don't have to say nothing. Fantabulous. Why you say that? Because I don't know what else to say. T tell me what, what can a man say to someone looking like you? To tell me the words, please. If you tell me that, I will say it. <laughs> well. 
I will. That's the truth. I'm not mocking, but it's the truth. I remember this, Aki and I, we were out one day. Can I tell the story? I'm going to tell it whether you want me to. And we were in this store, and of course, he was festy and strong, big boy like him, big as a bull, man, strongest one too. And this was a very attractive woman, who she had it laid on tight and everything. She sees him, she probably thought, oh, that was my son. He is my son. You must be the daddy, but he sure is fine. Woman never seen this man day in her life. She said, oh my, you, you look, you look good. The only thing he had to say, girl, don't even say that. That's a pearly, that's what you look, come on girl, stop it. You make my heart stop beating. I mean, I, 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 I have no position, I, I can't rap, but hey, you know, girl, God, stop it, my heart just, it, you make my heart flutter. Oh, you, uh, stop that. I mean, that's silly, it sounds silly, doesn't it? But that's all it takes. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Whoa, I, don't say that to me, please. I could, what do I say to you? Come on, let's go to McDonald's and get a burger. I'm buying. He didn't have to go to Bojangles to get chicken. Just go to Mac Mickey D. I know you all think it's funny, but it's that. Handsome, strong, vibrant thing like that. So I always tell the daughters of Tiz, undress yourself beautifully in your heart. Push back from the table. Keep us so young, keep your nation. That's what you do. You don't have to have no game. Back in the days, you had to have some game, as they said. You don't have to have it today. You don't need nothing. Sometimes I play that with my woman. I say, what would you say if you saw me? Tell me. What would you say to me? So what would you say to me? I said, no, 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 no. I said, what would you say to me? I said, how you doing, girl? What else do I say? How are you feeling? And what would you say to me? See, we get off a of bashful, don't we? We don't know how to respond, mama. They don't know how to. That's right. Because they knew that they had misappropriated that which they should not have appropriated. They laid their hands on things, on things that they should not. That's why I don't let any man just touch me. Those that have loved me say, well, let me hug you. No, whoa. Let you just lay hands on me, man. No, I don't. Uh-uh, you can, but I don't. And so we have a proliferation of the populace, don't we? It's not a lot of people upon the earth. Yisra'ya is scattered among the nations of the earth. And Shaul, in his excellent speech, he makes a statement here. I want you all to turn there, all right? It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 5. Shaul says, 1 Corinthians 8, 5, For though... There are called, or though there are called gods, he used it. A S to make it plural, doesn't he? Well, that's a small g in the Greek language and the Hebrew. All languages, basically, uh, you may have in the Hebrew language what they call the cursed, but it's all capital letters. He said, though, though there are called gods, whether it be in the heavens or in the earth, and then he says. Uh, and there are gods who use the words rap. There are gods many. Are there not? Not? He said, although there are gods many and lords, there are many lords. You got drug lords, you got landlords, uh, and you got the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you got the white Lord Jesus Christ, you got the black Lord Jesus Christ, uh, you got the Hispanic Lord Jesus Christ, you got the Chara God Lord Jesus Christ. And though there be many lords, he said, but to us, there is but one. Yeah. He is the power whom are all things, and we are in him. And one master, Yeshua HaMashiach, through whom are all things, and through him we 
live. Why? Through him. Why is it through Yahshua? Can I answer that for you? He said through him and in him. What is he? Is he not the word made flesh? He is the word made. He is the word that is barah, created and made. And so we do all things through the power of this living Torah. And Yahshua HaMashiach, there are many gods. That's why I don't give a damn. A god is a god and they are the equal power. Let no one kill you. All gods of equal power. All gods of equal power. There's only one God of this Olam and this earth realm. And that's why Shaul said, it's the message of Yahshua be hidden from you. It is because the God of this earth has blinded your mind. At least the power and the revelation of Torah life shine through and that you might be your shock. So when they hold on to their damn lies of their damn freak Jesus, Yah's not shining on their stupid, ignorant mind. I'm not going to constitute their lies and say, you're all right. You are wicked as hell. That's why you seek the power of the gods. Hold on to your damn Jesus. It makes me no difference. Because I know who your God is. Y'all doesn't share his honor with no damn God. He doesn't share his honor with nothing. No one. Nothing is going to be esteemed of him. Not even a shatan. That's why he calls him a God. That's why he calls him a God. Uh -uh. He's greater than a God. I was talking to an ark the other day. He said, you know, Ray Ark, he said, you know, you're so right. He said, every language, my name is the same. I said, so is the Messiah's name. He said, why is it that? Because we have ignorant men that have translated. And because we draw upon the God that has been birthed in us from childhood. Mama taught us Jesus well, didn't she? She taught us the Baptist whole way and the Methodist whole way. And that's why we're stubborn as hell today. Let's get real. It, it, it takes this Yisraya, you, you can't make a... I used to watch my grandmother make flowers. She would kneel that... Before she kneeled that dough, she had to get it out of the barrel and then she had to sift it. And what she sifted, she put it in another kind of sift and she put, put it through the winter call. She didn't let not one little kernel go to waste because flour was a commodity that was expensive back then. And she would get every little bit out. And what she threw out, it wasn't even worth wasting her time with. She sift and she would take that other kind of sifter that had the thing you turn. That, Yo, come on, you all know what I'm talking about. She turned that bad boy. I used to look, stand and watch her do that. And she would sift on that thing there. Mama, I remember this. I called myself making a cake one day. Seriously. I was a little boy. We had a wood burning stone. So I went in there and I started throwing it together. I got me some flour. I began to sift. I'm not, I can remember this. I was about six years old. I can remember just as clear as I am today. I got me some, I got me some flour and I got all that, the sugar. You didn't waste sugar back then. 60s? You didn't waste that, early 60s. That was, in the, that was probably in probably about 1960, 59, 60, something like that. And I, and I, and I was a young, I was a lad. But I remember this so vividly. So I put everything together and Granny had these old coffee grinds. They didn't just throw the coffee grinds out. So I got them coffee grinds and I put that in there. I mixed, yeah, I did. I mixed all that in there and I put sugar in there, I put flour, whatever I could find, I put it in there. And all of a sudden, Granny walked in and said, say, you little dirty thing, I'm going to whip the hell out of you. Messing with the flower. I got scared. Can I tell you what happened? I lied to you, not I'll never forget. Granny finished turning all that mess up together. She threw it in the pan. She said, y'all going to eat it. She baked that in the oven. I lied to you, not. That was some of the best cake ever. Oh, this is thou. I lied to you, not. We enjoyed that. She put that. That mess in the oven. We ate out. And everybody, oh, we didn't get much sweets back then. Everybody, woo, 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 woo. We ate that. And it was, it was excellent. I can recall it. It didn't have, have no bitter coffee ground. Granny, come on, she didn't throw away nothing. She said, y'all, y'all was going to eat it. I was mean it. And all of us, we, chalked, we ate every drop of it. Even the, the, the ones that were older ate some of that. Granny, what is this? This, is, this tastes so tough. We consumed it. I know y'all don't believe me, but that's the truth. It was tough. You don't just give a child that ate something. They, if it's not tough, they, don't, they won't eat it. That's why when I cook, I let the children say, oh, Papa, this is so tough. Give me some of that. 
cut me something. Papa, give me, I'm so hungry. They all cut me something. All right, here, we're going to lay this out. Here's some slices. Oh, Papa, that is so tough. That is, you can't trick a child. Y'all want some more? Yes, we, 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 we want some apple juice. Okay, just give me some. I'll set it. That's a half of the squid. But you all go get some glasses and everybody get some apple juice. All right. Oh, Poppy, that's so tough. Can I have, I want to, what, what, is that done? Yeah, I'll let you all try it. They give you the honest opinion. When they don't like it, they don't touch it. They leave it there. I know that. I'm going to close in a moment. All right? I'm not going to finish today. Next week, I promise you, I'm going to conclude this. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The first thing they did when they realized that their eyes were open, they knew that they were gods. They knew that. And they had chosen from that what was right, what was wrong. And no one was going to tell them, not even Yah, if they were right or wrong. Now they defied Yah, didn't they? Yes. I want to read this in the book of Yakahan, John chapter 8. You're sure talking to those stubborn Hebrews. And that is what brings a nation down. It is uh, purporting and the perpetuation of the lies among his nations. And that's why this lying demon called Jesus and Lord and all that, it's a lie. It's wrong. It's wrong, Yisrael. So if they obeyed Hashatan, then they give their ears over unto truth or lies. Well, I will prove it what it says in the book of Yakahana, John chapter 8, verse 44. Yoshua said, For you are of your father the devil. He said, And the lust of your father will you do. He was a murderer. That's what a murderer is. A murderer is one that what? Is one that hate your own brother. You hate your own sister. You're a murderer. You despise the fellowship and the company of your sister. You are a murderer. He said he was a murderer from the beginning. Uh, listen to this. And he abode not in the truth. Uh, why? Because there's no truth in him. What is the truth? Psalms 119, 142. Uh, for his Sadiq is an everlasting righteousness and his Torah is in the truth. Uh, when their minds separated from the truth, uh, they become subject unto the powers uh, of darkness. Uh, and when you forget the constitution of Yah, you fall prey to the wicked one. And you will dwell in lies, you will buy lies, you will eat lies, you will absorb lies, you will give attention to lies, you will give your spirit over unto lies. He was a murderer from the beginning. Why? Because he did not dwell in truth. So from the beginning when he spoke to them, the day that you defy Yah, you will become God. Did he know what a God was? Sure, it was because he knew he was a God. I have chosen, we said, I choose my own ways. Now we do all things to please Almighty Yah. Not my will be done, but his will, his heart his pleasure, his delight, his desire. And so the first constitution of the God say, you satisfy you. Damn what the word says. You satisfy you. You do what is pleasing to you. And that's what they did. That's what, that was the spirit that opened in their minds when they realized that they were naked. They hid themselves from Yah. They wanted to do it secretive. They knew that they were subtle and shrewd and crafty and wicked. And we think we're crafty and shrewd. That's just the truth. He was a liar from the beginning. Where do we see the beginning of him? There in the gun of uh, Adon. Do we not see Hashatan there? Did he tell them the truth or he told them a lie? He told them a lie. And we see the proliferation of the gods out of the seed of Abraham. Every strange land they went into, they gods. And those that came on the ships here to America, though not everyone that came on the ships were Hebrews. It's a damn lie. His people were scattered to the four corners of the earth. You understand? Well, we have the physical characteristics. That's a bunch of bull shysting. We don't look nothing like we look when we got on the ship. We've all been exposed uh, to the seed of other nations. Uh, we've all been exposed to that. Look at that young man's complexion. Look at it. I said, boy, his beard. I said to one day, boy, your beard is so black, boy. You putting on that spray? 
in our I just get old, my beard is white. The shimmer I say is so white. This side, I can't even tell I got hair on that side because it's just. Uh. Look at that young, beautiful man. Hmm. Look at her complexion. Look at the shades here. We got the fist characteristic. But what are the physical characteristics? Were they all six foot two? Huh? 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 Were they all five foot five? And people buy that because they give them this exuberant of pride. And they worship the creature more than the creator. The creature of their own belly. Were the women fine and voluptuous? Black as tar? Huh? Well, you missed the boat. Your mom and daddy missed the boat, boy. And I don't know about you either, my friend. Maybe your great great grandpappy missed the steps. How about that? Ah, yes. I'm darker than you. How about that? True. We battle over that. I'm darker than you. Look at me. I wanted to be black as a piece of coal. I want to be that black, black as they come. So what are the physical characteristics? There's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own. Now that's what we do. With well, this just the way I feel, you never said that, have you? No, you haven't. Well, this is the way I feel about it. I feel this way about it. Man, this is the way I feel, man. You don't know how I feel, man. Well, I got my own feelings. He speaks it of his own. You got your own opinion. I got my own opinion. And he speaks it of his own. Your judgment, your opinion doesn't mean a damn thing. He speaks of his own, for he is a liar. He is a liar and the father of it. Yeshua says, and here I am. He said, I tell you, uh, ha or emet or emet truth. I tell you the truth, and you all don't even believe me. We'll stop right there. And we'll deal with that next time, all right? The decaying of a nation. He says, I speak the truth. I speak from Torah, and you don't believe me. Did I begin in the Torah? Did I begin in the Torah? I began out of the first five books, didn't I? And I speak the truth out of the Torah. He was a liar from the beginning. There are many gods and there are many lords. That's why Yah says, I want you to remember what I did to Be'el Peora, the Lord of the gaps. Remember, at least you forget what I've done. This is the demise of any nation. This is what has brought the nation of Yisrael Yah down. Because everyone is speaking on their own. Everyone got their own opinion. And it's not worth anything. It doesn't constitute any wealth. It doesn't bring about any kind of strength unto the nation. Can't nobody tell me. I know nobody's going to tell you. I know you're not going to listen to anyone. You know everything. And yet you know nothing. We got everything. And yet we have nothing. Mom, I know what it is to take care of my babies. You don't know what it is, daughter. That's why she's a mother. That's why you call her mother. She was a mother before you were born. She was a mother because she carried you. She was a mother because you sucked her titty. Remember when we were in Kenya? I'm close with this. Of course, the women, until Pastor Kimani, you say what I say, man. I don't want you to try to alter anything I say. You say it just like that. And I took my time. Sometimes I get in a hurry, but that's all right. And I stood there and I talked just like I'm talking here. 
And I remember teaching out of the song of Ecclesiastes, Ishira Shira, the Psalms of Solomon, I mean the Psalm of Solomon, the beautiful wife, the beautiful breast and all of that. When you got to that part to read that part, because you, you saw this tribal instinctive type of habit and rituals that were innate with them and a part of their society. And it just wasn't right. And I didn't like it. And I rebuked it. And so when I got to that part where it says, Brass, he got quiet. He was standing right here. I said, say what it said. And the people looking, and he's looking. They're looking at him. I said, Pastor, I'm telling you now, I want you to say everything I say. Don't, don't you alter anything. And so he looks at me, he says, Brother, I, in Swahili, there is no word for that. Bras. So this mama sitting right on the first, second row, she got the titty all out. I wasn't offended at that. When I was a kid, they pop the titty, I throw a handkerchief over and feed the babies. Your daughters don't do that because this is a wicked world. You go to jail for that. I say, that thing that she got in the baby's mouth right there, what do you call that? That titty. He said, oh, that's what we call it, titty. I said, well, the titty, the titty, the titty. That's why a young man enjoyed the breast of his wife in his youth. And the young woman there and let the world enjoy their breasts. Show them these are dirty two-cent hoes. I don't care what you say. You should be ashamed, and we should be ashamed of our actions. I am. I'm ashamed of everything I've done. I've done nothing that was right and honorable. Still don't. It's just the kindness of the Hasids, the Naham of Yam. That's it. He loves me. He cares for us because he reproves us. One well, last thing, I must read this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We greet you, our friends, in the name of Yoshua HaMashiach. I don't care if you don't like me, but I like it when you love me. All right, how about that? Is that all right? That's all right. If you don't like me, that's all right. Sometimes my issue is I don't like you. I understand that talk, though. As I don't like you, that's all right. As I don't mind, she don't like me because I like her. Now, I don't like her. I like her. Hallelujah. That's all right. There's a verse I wanted to read. Where was that verse, y'all? Hallelujah. Here it is. We need the men to stand with great tenacity and strength and beauty of power. That's what we need. We can have the little boys that are so immature and so insecure that they have no knowledge of what Torah says. That was a verse I wanted to read. We must have strong men today, Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. That will stand strong in men of tenacity and men of character. We must know them that labor among us. We must be able to see them and see how they walk and talk and live. That's what we must know. You have experienced them. We got to have men like that. And all the men got to be all the men. Can't be little silly boys. They got to be men. They got to be an example to the young men. Above all things, I want to be example to my Achim and the daughters as well. I want them to see the chastity or the chest, the, the beauty of a man and a strong man. As I get older and weaker, that's all right. That's what I want them to see. I don't want them to have the memory he was fresh. Where he, he, they just don't know what he said to me one day. No. You may interpret it wrong. I don't want that. I don't want my tongue to be evil spoken of. And I'm not going to let you do that. No, my works speak for me. The righteousness of Yah's Torah in my bosom. Hallelujah. Now I will save that for next week. I know what it is. All right. He was a liar from the beginning. So the first thing he said to them, the day you defy Yah, 
you become gods. That's what Jesus has done. And that's why the creators of Jesus, they have defied Torah. And he has become their God. He has become their God. He, they will tell you, Jesus is the God. And that's a lie. He is your God. Yoshua is the Hamashiach. He is the power of his Dabarim. His Torah promises to save his nation. We got to get this Christian concept out of our wicked minds. We're so wrapped up in that, it's difficult for us to understand. Can I ask you a question? Does medicine evolve, doctors evolve with procedures and techniques? All right then. So this word has evolved that we may understand the great depths of it. And there are messengers there, men. I don't trust nobody. Well, half of you don't trust nobody. Who gives a damn? I'm not going to stop saying damn or hell. I was talking to this precious brother yesterday. He says to me, he said, Riyak, you know what it says in Yeremiah? I know exactly what it says. He said that, you know, he must give pastors after his heart. I say, can I quote that for you, my friend? Yah says that I will give Riyak after mine own heart. I say, I often ask the people the question, do you trust the heart of Yah? And they always say, oh, yeah, baby, I trust Yah. I say, well, did he lie when he said that? Trust no man, but did he lie when he said that? I don't trust no man, but did Yah lie when he said that? Is that when we become perfect in the kingdom, whereas we walk in the kingdom? No, that's for now. I say, you will know that he is the messenger of Yah by this, because he tells you what he will do. He will feed, he will ra'ah. He will take them to the pasture, like we take the cows from here over there, and we move them from here to there. It says that he will feed you. He will cause you to graze. He will cause you to graze in the open pastures. He will cause you to eat and to find the nutrients that you need. He will feed you. I said, see what it says? He will feed you with knowledge. Da'at. Da'at. He will feed you with the wisdom of Torah knowledge. And be not with understanding, you have the power to discern. And you will know who is the true messenger of Yah. I said, that's what his messengers do. You will know that they are messengers of Yah when they feed you with that. You will know that they are men of Yah, that Yah has given his heart to them. And they will speak from the heart of Yah. You will know that. He was blessed to hear that. Bless you, Rea. I know he's listening. Bless you, my friend. You know who you are. And I do too. May the riches of Yah rest upon you. Come on, Azakim. Yabra. Bless you all that everyone. So they're all praying. Yabra. Hallelujah. Yabra ko Yisrael Yahweh told Yahweh for the message of sound truth and understanding, of wisdom and knowledge. Let us, as I continually say, let it soak in Yisrael. Let us act upon the word of Yahweh. Let us do what is commanded of us to do, Yisrael. And Yah, he promised us great riches and a reward after the end of it all, Yisrael. You know, he sent his Torah to heal the nation of Yisrael, to make us strong, that we overcome our enemies, that we continue to grow in the knowledge and the wisdom that he gives to us, Yisrael, that we will be made better. And that he has prepared a place for us at the end of all things, Yisrael. That's, that's his great reward for us, Yisrael. So it should not be a hard and, and tedious thing for us to obey his Torah, because he has something that the world cannot give us, that we cannot even imagine, Yisraya, prepare for us in his milku, in his kingdom. Hallelujah. So let us do all to please him as Yahshua HaMashiach did all to please our Abba. Let us stand to our feet, Yisraya. Hallelujah. Another day that Yahweh has barak, Yisraya. Hallelujah. This beautiful Shabbat. Abba Yahweh, we told you for another day that you have made, you have Rain down your Ruach upon Yisrael, yeah. And your, you have sent the throne, the, the, the coal from your throne, Abba Yahweh, to lay upon the mouth of your messenger that it may set on fire the heart of Yisrael, yeah. So we told you, Abba Yahweh, for that. We told you for everyone, everyone that is listening, those that are here at Teshua and Yisrael, yeah, that are scattered around the world. For without them, Yisrael, Almighty Yahweh, we know that we are not made complete. We're not made perfect without coal Yisrael, yeah. And all things we do, Barak, in the precious name of Yahshua HaMashiach, take those that have come from near and far up of Yahweh home safely today. In Yahshua's mighty name we do pray. Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh. 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 Yah